This tutorial demonstrates a very effective way to model a human hand. A lot of people model the thumb as though it's coming out of the side of the hand, but as we can see in this picture, the whole one-third bottom left corner of the hand is actually comprised of the thumb. My hand modeling technique takes this structure into account from the very beginning. Let's start by making a box and positioning it roughly over the palm of the hand. Let's take the left edge on the palm side and slide it over to the middle of the palm. This creates a diagonal face from which we can extrude the thumb. Now let's extrude up from the main horizontal crease in the palm to the base of the fingers and down from the wrist to a little bit below the wrist. Now it's time to extrude out the thumb. Let's keep an eye on the reference and make sure that as we extrude it, we're rotating and scaling to keep it lined up with the reference. Smoothing the model once is the same as splitting every edge ring once, and it helps round everything out. Every time you add more geometry, make sure you're going into every vert and tweaking it to line up with your reference. It's a lot easier when there's only a few verts to deal with rather than hundreds. Notice how the baseline of the fingers is an arc rather than a horizontal straight line. Let's get rid of some of these faces on the top to get, make room for the uh, fingers. The edge flow structure as it is right now is perfect for the hand, so to add more geometry all we do is use the split edge ring tool to create more loops. There's no need to take the split polygon tool and cut against the edge flow that we have going now. For the fingers, start with a simple box, then we'll cut edge loops to add more detail. I'm going to model one finger and then duplicate it for the other fingers. If you do it this way, make sure that you're editing each finger individually to give it, give it its own character so that they don't look like they've been stamped out of an assembly line. It may feel tedious to tweak a bunch of verts by hand one at a time, but it's really the only way to make sure that your model turns out as accurate as possible. Adjusting verts one at a time is almost essential for achieving an organic look and avoiding the uh, assembly line feel.
I'm going to add one edge loop down the center of the finger. This will create a total of six edges running the length of the finger. This is all the edges you need to define the shape of the finger down the length. Anyway, we're still going to add some more loops running around the finger, but uh, six is really all you need for the length. A total of three loops running around each joint and one or two loops between joints is probably optimal. Keep the loops tight together on the underside of the finger where the crease is and spread them apart on the top of the finger to create a round knuckle shape. For tweaks at this fine level, looking at your own hand is probably better than any reference you could get. If your character has very long fingernails or claws, it might make sense to create them as separate geometry. However, I'm just going to extrude my fingernails right out of the mesh of the finger. First extrude down once, adjust some verts to uh, help with the, the round shape of the finger around the nail, and then extrude up and forward once. It's still a little on the wide side, I'm just going to shrink it down a bit. And that's pretty close to finished right there. You can see that the knuckles already have pretty good definition. I could even make them uh, more defined just by tweaking a few verts. There's really no need to extrude out faces in order to create the knuckle detail. That will just make knuckles look stuck on, like a callus on the surface, rather than uh, feeling like there's a bone underneath the surface of the skin. There also shouldn't ever be a need to model in the wrinkles on the knuckles of the fingers. That kind of detail is better done as a bump map, or a displacement map, or texture map. When a finger looks like it's in a good position, go ahead and combine it with the main hand model and uh, merge the verts that are on top of each other. I'm scaling the duplicated fingers in order to give them uh, the general size and shape that the uh, other fingers should have, but by no means stop at just scaling. They need to be tweaked vert by vert to give them individual character. Go ahead and add loops on the palm so that each loop that's coming off the finger has somewhere to run to. The number of edge loops that you have on the back of the hand should be just enough so that there's one loop per tendon plus one loop per space between tendons. Be sure to angle the edges so that they fan out from a relatively small area at the wrist to wider at the knuckles. I'm going to wrap up this tutorial soon. There's plenty more that could be done, uh, but the basic edge flow is here. It's a simple process of just looking at your reference, looking at your own hand, adding detail where you need it, and tweaking the verts. A mesh like this should give you a very effective base for going into the ZBrush or Mudbox and adding more detail.